Good morning, guys, and happy Monday. Obviously, as you know, on Mondays, we take the beginning of these videos a little differently, where I just have the chance to kind of talk to you a little bit about what I want the big idea for the week to be. So I'm going to cover two big things with you right off the bat. Number one, obviously, many of you let me know that my math lab was experiencing technical difficulties yesterday. So that means that the homework for yesterday, once again, sorry, I'm always filming a day in advance. The homework which would normally be due this morning by 8 o'clock, I've extended that to 2 o'clock this afternoon. That should give you enough time if you did run into any technical problems to be able to get that finished. It also means that I'm going to be keeping homework for today very short, and that's going to happen in all my classes. So make sure that if you did not get the chance to take care of things, that you take a step back and take care of that first. Not only because it's important to be able to get the grade done, but also because you want to make sure that you're ready for the quiz, which will be tomorrow. Remember, again, Tuesdays right now is looking like the day that I'm going to sort of keep open for quizzing. And this week is going to be no exception. We'll talk more specifically about that in each class. I also want to give you one tip. I thought about this a lot this weekend. You know, like how when you go home over the summer and then you come back and you've forgotten everything? I want to keep in mind the importance of you also going back and looking over stuff from earlier in the year. Because with this change, in the environment of school, there's going to be a lot that gets lost. And so you want to stay on top of that. Because remember, you will be back in a building. We don't know when yet, but we know you will be. So I recommend to everybody that you take a look at the exam simulations from previous quarters so that you feel confident about what it is that you're trying to get done, both for now and for math classes that you have in the future. Once again, the big takeaways, review stuff from the past when you have the chance. Be aware that homework from this weekend has been extended to 2 p.m. today to give you time to get that done because of the technical difficulties. Quiz tomorrow, very short homework assignments tonight, and for each class, I'll discuss the specific things you need to know. See you in a minute. Okay, welcome back, guys. Uh, obviously, we talked earlier in the video about some issues with my math lab. I want to start by telling you what the plan is for today. Remember, the homework from the weekend, as of the shooting of this video, I went ahead and made the call to extend that to 2 p.m. So if you still don't have that done, obviously, that's the first priority. Today, as I said, we're going to continue looking at a couple of other examples of how we apply these exponential functions in real-world situations. Uh, the two today are going to deal primarily with finance, but they can be applied to any other real growth or decay issue. I want to take a step back and actually get to look at one that doesn't involve E, so you can start to kind of understand the difference of what, uh, what it is that E represents as a specialty constant, as opposed to the other means of working with exponentials. So it's an example of something we call compound interest. And this is actually a step back from the continuous compound interest that we worked with on Friday. And I wanted to do that so we could actually kind of pump the brakes a little bit. I put up here in the corner a reminder of what that continuous compounding interest formula is. And I want to let those of you know, if you thought about it, you looked at the videos closely last week, we're really just dealing with what we call a basic growth equation here or a growth function where E allows us to track the continuous growth of something over infinitely small amounts of time. But in some cases with finance, we don't do things continuously like that. So compound interest in a basic sense is if I put money in the bank and the bank is going to pay me interest, and they're willing to pay me interest not only on what I put in the bank originally, but also check my balance every so often, and whatever interest got added, also paying interest on that, that's what we mean when we refer to compound interest. And if you look, you're going to notice that the formula, even though it seems a little more complicated, works essentially the same as the continuous compounding interest formula. Really just E, and the eagle-eyed among you will see that this is just a version of E that we've discussed in previous classes. Uh, it allows us to break it down less continuously, if that makes sense. So, Again, just like on Friday, this is basically just can you work your calculator? 
The second one that I show you in a minute is going to be a little bit more complex. So I'm going to burn through this one real quick. So let's say we've got a bank account. We put $3,000 in. Uh, we're going to leave that money in the account for five years. And interest is going to be compounded quarterly. And the idea is how much uh, am I going to have when uh, uh, that five years is up? So here's the formula. Uh, we have a final amount, which is what we're going to be looking for here. Principal, remember, is how much we start with. That's 5000 We've got our rate, which we're going to state as a, and I didn't put the rate there, uh, although it's hidden in what I talked about. It pays us 5% interest. Uh, the rate is always going to be expressed as a decimal. Time is the total time that we're going to leave the money in the account. And then N in the equation is the number of times that the interest is going to be compounded per year. I didn't put that on the end because I didn't want to clutter up the board too much. So again, it's can you plug all this into your calculator? It's pretty simple. So at the end of that five years, and by the way, I don't want to give away the surprise, but there's a very adult lesson here about uh, banks and rates of return. For those of you that imagine, A, that $3,000 is a great deal of money, which it is a great deal of money, but that if you leave it in the bank for five years, letting it collect interest, that you are going to be able to retire off of it. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, and if any parents are watching the video over your shoulder right now, I assume that they're sort of nodding sagely to themselves as well. So $3,000 is what we start with. The one is a constant, plus uh, the rate over the total time. The rate is 5%, so we state that as 0 0.05 over 4. Remember, that is the number of times we compound the interest per year. So since we do it quarterly, that happens once every three months or four times. And then we're going to raise that to the power of the number of times compounded times the time, or 4 times 5. To be frank, when you punch that into your calculator, you do not need to put 4 times 5. Everybody here knows that's 20. You can just go ahead and do that. And then you are going to see, after 5 years of not touching your money and let it work for you, you will have the princely sum of $3,846.00. And 11 cents. I, I'm not, I, I, I just, I don't want to give away all the surprises about adulthood. Uh, this one's pretty simple. Uh, we'll switch gears real quick, and then I'm going to uh, show you the next one that we're going to be able to look at here. And then we'll also talk about the quiz. Okay, so what I want to talk about in this next one is just a little different. So you're going to notice that I'm using a formula that we already worked with on Friday. And what I want to talk about is rounding errors in the past. You know, a lot of times when, when I was in school, the way I would handle complex algebraic manipulations is I, well, if I had a nickel for every time I had to think about all the times I handled complex algebra day, algebra, I can't, I was, it was, it was not a good joke to start with, and, and my mouth proved that to me. It said, I'm, I'm not going down this road with you, so I'm, I'm fine with that. I know when to say that. So. Uh, complex algebraic manipulations, I would always want to plug the numbers in first and then do all the multiplication and division to isolate whatever the variable was. But as our calculations need to become more and more precise, we need to do all of our manipulations on the front end. So those of you that have been caught like on the trig with rounding errors, generally that's the issue. You're punching your numbers in but because they're not exactly precise, because maybe you're rounding them out to four decimal places, five decimal places, but maybe they go on a lot longer than that. Or maybe in a case like E, we're narrowing something down to an almost infinitely small level of time. Then we need to do our manipulations on the front end. So let me propose something to you. This allows us to do continuous compounding interest to determine how much we would have after a certain amount of time. We did that on Friday. But let's say that that was reversed. Let's say that I knew how much I wanted in the future, and so I needed to know how much to invest now. In other words, how can I calculate or isolate the P, the present value, or principle, if you will, in this equation? Like, for example, let's say I wanted $5,000 six years from now, and I knew that that account was going to pay me 9% interest. But how much would I need to start with? Now, when I was in high school, if I had been doing this problem, I would have punched all my numbers in first, 
put them in the equation, and then started dividing. And I would have gotten the wrong answer as a result of that. Instead, let's take what we know about exponents and be smart about how to work this out. So we want to isolate P. Now, this is a relatively simple procedure here. Most of you should look at that and go, okay, well, if I could just divide by all this other stuff, then I can get P by itself. And, and you'd be right, we can do that. So then we end up with something that looks like this. Okay, easy enough, but is there an even more elegant or basic way that we can write that? Remember, any exponents on the bottom of a fraction, or on the top of a fraction for that matter, if we change them to negative exponents, we can move them to the other side of the fraction. So let's go ahead and do that. So by placing a negative sign in front of that exponent, we've now made everything a little more clean and elegant, and more importantly, set it up so that we're not going to end up with rounding errors, because now we're punching everything directly in, in the form that it needs to be calculated. So if we take a look over here, you can see an example of that. We've got uh, the amount that we want at the end, $5,000, times E, and then we are raising that to the negative 0.09, there's our 9% interest, times six years from now. And that means that if six years from now, this is kind of the same discussion we were having earlier on the uh, only from the other end. If I want $5,000 six years from now at 9% interest, I need to bring $2,913.74 to the bank. So, uh, obviously with some my math lab problems, uh, we've got some issues with knowing whether or not, where we'll be tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, today, excuse me, I'm filming this again the night before. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the quiz, and if things change on this, I'll let you know. So the idea is there's going to be 10 items on the quiz. Three, this will be Tuesday, and it'll be your only homework. Three of them will be basic uh, exponential competency. Can you work with punching numbers into your calculator? Can you work with the basic exponents? Here's the good news. You will only have one transformation, and I'm telling you right now that that transformation is only going to involve two separate steps. Will not have a three-step, will not have a four-step. Uh, after that, you will have three items that ask you to relate the bases. That's Thursday night's homework and then three application problems like this. I will provide you a formula sheet with all the formulas you need to be able to work with these. So we should be pretty good to go on that all in all. Hopefully everything comes along the way we want it to, and, um, and I will see you uh, tomorrow, hopefully, assuming uh, my math lab is back up and running and we're all good to go. Have a good day and good luck with everything.